Okay, so today we're going to talk about the nonfiction priority reads on my TBR for 2022. So I've been slowly getting into nonfiction a little bit more. Um, I think that when I started reading post college, you know, everything I read in college was nonfiction. So um, I was very burnt out on that idea and wanted to like just read for fun. Um, and nonfiction, as time has gone on, has got more fun to read. So uh, it's my percentage of books that I've been reading that's nonfiction has slowly gone up. So for 2021, it was at about 15% of what I was reading. I don't have a goal of where I want that to get to, but I do want to prioritize reading nonfiction throughout the year. So um, I started writing down a list of like priority reads and it ended up being 21. And I'm like, I might as well find another one and make it 22 and, you know, we can do the 22 books in 2022, which, you know, booktube loves that. The first book, this one has been on my TBR for like five or six years and it's pretty intimidating for me, um, and that is O. Albany. It's by William Kennedy, who won the Pulitzer something for Ironweed, but he is from Albany, New York, which is the city I live near. And so basically any used bookstore you find around here, you will find this book. Uh, and it is a history of Albany. It's kind of his o ode to the place he grew up and he talks about the history of it. So because I live there, uh, I figure I should read this, but it's very chunky and I don't typically do well with like historic nonfiction that doesn't have a narrative associated with it, but I, I do want to try to start getting through this book. I feel like I just have to accept the fact that I have to read it slowly. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But that's like the one that's like <laughs> on this TBR that's like the most iffy um, if I'm going to get to it. Next one I want to read is Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis. Social justice nonfiction is a big, is like a large majority of this TBR. I read the new Jim Crow um, by Michelle Alexander a few years ago and really loved it. And this is a book that I saw recommended based on reading that. And uh, I just personally have quite a big issue with the prison industrial complex in the United States. Um, and it's privatization and how we put people in prison for things that I think are very minor uh, and how that prison system kind of stays with you forever. I'd like to read more nonfiction around that and kind of like solidify my ideas or ideology about that a little bit more. The Death and Life of Great American Cities. So this is a relatively old book. It was published in 1961 and it's like really about urban planning um, and my partner went got a master's in urban and regional development so basically planning and uh, he really enjoyed it and it gave him and really his whole degree gave him a totally different perspective on the world around us like the human made man-made world around us um, so I am interested in reading that. All right, the next one is The Second Amendment, a biography. This is one of the more contentious amendments in the United States, the right to bear arms, but I don't really want to go into my beliefs on that. We will just say that they are fairly complicated and I don't have a straightforward idea on, um, I would just say my thoughts on them are complex uh, fundamentally, I find the concept of firearms to be extremely fascinating, um, just like the mechanics of them themselves and how they trigger and different types of trigger actions and stuff like that. And this is going to just be a look at the Second Amendment itself. So I'm very interested to see where it's going to go. And it is political because it is an amendment to the Constitution, but I'm hoping at least the, po the book itself doesn't go too much into the politics 
of people in really either direction. I'm really hoping it doesn't like take a liberal or conservative approach and it really just approaches like the historical elements of the um, amendment and uh, like the history of it. The next one is who wrote the Bible. I want to say I saw this at Mara on Books Like Woe's channel a few years ago, but I could be mistaken. Um, but again, it is kind of supposed to be like the history of um, who wrote the Bible, um, the, the changes that have been made through time, and uh, more, yeah, just more of a historic look on that. Um, I've never actually read the Bible fully, um, but I have read parts of it. So um, I will, as I said for all these, just be interested to see what I learn with this. So the next one is more of um, going down the memoir, but it does say it's an essay collection. That's the collected schizophrenias. I saw this on a bunch of people's favorites lists a few years back and um, have had it on my list of like, like my TBR this whole time. I just haven't really like gotten around to reading it, um, but it goes, it's essays on the author's met, like diagnosis of schizophrenia, I believe, and then like moving onward. And I've heard it's really well written and very powerful, so I'm excited for that. Next one, another memoir, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Uh, this one also, a few years ago, was all over on people's favorite lists of um, nonfiction. Uh, I've really, I've heard really great things about the writing. Um, I've heard that it's mainly about a queer relationship that is uh, toxic and uh, kind of like breaks down this ideology that is kind of um, permeated mainstream culture of like queer relationships being like happy and not having like the same potential for chaos that um, straight relationships have. I feel like someone, maybe Simon at Savage Reads, I feel like he said in one of his that vi videos that this, like each chapter is kind of written differently, which I always love when an author can kind of flex that their writing can change based on like how they want to convey something. So I'm, I have a feeling this is going to be really intense. I am looking forward to it. Okay, the next one is The Undocumented Americans. This is again another memoir and it is about a woman who is undocumented living in America and just writing on it. Um, I believe she's like talks about being in college and being on DACA. Like the title suggests, it's not just about herself, it's about others that she knows or knew. In college, I was a peer-to-peer -peer life coach and we had to take a lot of classes to um, kind of understand different populations of individuals at the school. And one of them was uh, undocumented students and uh, the different policies and acts that made um, them able to, made them able to get like in-state tuition and things like that. And uh, the population of undocumented people is quite a bit higher than what you would imagine. And uh, a lot of people don't know that they're undocumented until they try to get a driver's license or something like that. So I'm very, I'm looking forward to reading like a, um, a memoir about this. The next one is The End of Policing. I believe I also saw this at Mara Books Like Woe's channel. So the idea of policing, um, especially in the past few years, has kind of come to more to the forefront of the political conversation, at least in the United States. People are on the side of defunding the police. Other folks like to put on their Blue Lives Matter stickers onto their cars. Um, <laughs> I don't have um, a very rooted opinion on this matter and I would like to read a book that explains kind of logistically what ending policing would entail and how they see that looking or historically where that's happened and it has worked. I guess if we want to talk about the philosophy of why I read nonfiction, it's 
to learn. Um, sometimes it is to learn on the scope of a memoir of someone's life, of someone's lived experiences. And other times it is a more global learning about an idea or learning about a time in history or something to that effect. Uh, so yeah, a lot, most of these books on this list are to just kind of grow my thought processes and make my own opinions and ideals uh, a bit more rooted. They're always kind of like open to change uh, as I gain new information. I think that there's like these, um, there's these ideas or like when you're younger, at least when I was younger, I was so self-righteous and just like such a smart ass, which I still am, but um, I think a little bit less so. And as a, you know, I just remember being like 16 and 18 and just thinking I knew fucking everything and then going to college and just having my like worldview completely changed because it was like the first time I wasn't living in the confines of my family and hearing their opinions and I was just like gaining more insight and knowledge into things that I had never seen or heard before in the little bubble I lived in in my home and then in the little bubble that I lived in in the suburb suburban community I grew up in. Um, and then I, I think that being in college, it was like, oh, I know everything now. And it was still this like self-righteous air about me. And as I kind of um, have gotten a bit older and, uh, you know, lived on my own and kind of just, you know, my frontal lobe has fully developed at this point. Yay. <laughs> I feel that I have uh, become a lot more humble in my opinions and also been able to say, which I think a lot of the internet and the world at large should be able to say is, I don't totally have an opinion on that yet. I need to learn more before I have an opinion on that. Um, and so nonfiction is my way of learning more. And I guess we'll get back to my list. Okay, the next one is Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to Present. I have seen this on Ashley at Bookish Realms channel multiple times. She really does talk about how you need to be kind of like in a good like headspace to read this because it does convey a lot of historical traumas that have happened to black bodies and how black bodies have been seen as objects that can be utilized um, to achieve other people's means. And uh, I just think it's like a part of American history that people should know about. And so I would like to educate myself more, which is why it is on the list. Back to memoirs. I should have put this like in an order, or categorized it, but honestly, I just, I don't plan my videos out enough for that. It's just, that's just it. <laughs> okay, and this one is A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. Billy Ray Belcourt is a poet and I believe had multiple collections or one collection out before he, I think he, yes, he published um, this memoir. I've just heard that the writing in it is really powerful, really like takes a lot of the prose use that he has in his poetry to kind of get his ideas across. I've seen really great reviews on it on it on multiple channels, so I can't think of who at the moment. As a briefish synopsis, it says it's a meditation on grief, joy, love, and sex at the intersection of indigeneity and queerness. Okay, next one. Our history is the future. Standing Rock versus the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Long Tradition of Indigenous Resistance by Nick Estes. I saw this on Brian at Bookish's channel, he put this in his top nonfiction of 2021. From how he describes it, it is a kind of call to continue resisting the, um, for indigenous people and beyond to keep resisting the, um, government bodies, political bodies, etc., from trying to take, um, and continuously steal indigenous people's lands and destroy their resources. And I look forward to reading this. 
Okay, the next one, America for Americans, A History of Xenophobia in the United States by Erica Lee. So this is on my list because I read her book, The Making of Asian America, in 2021, and I really loved it. I thought that the scope was really well done. I thought that even though she focused on so many different things, um, she still put it in a really nice order where it was easily to, easy to consume. And so I saw that she had another book out and I wanted to pick it up. Um, she does, of course, touch on xenophobia in um, The Making of Asian America, but a look at xenophobia in America and how it is kind of come to being, um, which I'm, I'm guessing she's going to use the lens of the fact that this is a, aside from indigenous folks, everyone who lives in America um, is not originally from here. So the concept of xenophobia, when you look at it through that lens, has to be fairly interesting. I'm, I'm, see, I'm interested to see how she is going to explore this. Okay, the next one, back to memoir, is Sitting Pretty, The View from My Ordinary Resilient Disabled Body by Rebecca Tossig. I, I saw this at um, Mercedes Channel, Mercedes Bookish Musings, Mercedes Musings. Most people probably know who Mercedes is <laughs> who watch me. Um, but again, um, just just a perspective. I don't think I've read any memoirs by disabled, any disabled folks. So it's just a part of my reading and kind of learning that I haven't really dove into as much. So I want to do so and I'm going to read this. And let's see. Along the same lines, I want to read Care Work, Dreaming Disability Justice. This I've seen very highly recommended at Mariana and Mariana Mas Books channel. This is a um, essay collection discussing disability justice. This author had a essay, an essay in um, disability visibility that I read about a month ago, and I really enjoyed that collection. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this as well. The next one on my list, which I believe is the only one I have in translation, is Migratory Birds by Mariana Oliver. I'm just going to read you the synopsis. In her prize-winning debut, author, the author trains her gaze on migration in its many forms, moving between real cities and other more inaccessible territories language, memory, pain, desire, and the body. With an abiding curiosity and poetic ease, Oliver leads us through the underground city of Cappadocia, explores the vicissitudes of a Berlin marked by a historical fracture, recalls a shocking child, childhood exodus, and recreates the intimacy of the spaces we inhabit. So it's kind of like a form of travel writing through the lens of migration. It sounds very unique conceptually, so I'm looking forward to it because of that. Okay, so this one I added to my TBR because I feel that uh, I don't really know anything about the Pacific Islands or any of the Polynesian islands, any of the islands within the Pacific. Culturally, Historically, I just, it's just a big gap for me. So the book I am going to first pick up that discusses this is Decolonization and the Pacific Indigenous Globalization and the Ends of Empire. It says she demonstrates the way imperial powers conceived of decolonization as a new form of imperialism. She shows how indigenous peoples responded to these limits by developing rich intellectual, political, and cultural networks transcending colonial and national borders with localized traditions of protest and dialogue connected to the global ferment of the 20th century. So I feel like this is like kind of one of those books where they try to tell you what it's about, but like you actually have no idea what it's about until you read it. Okay, the next one I want to read, which has been on my TBR for years as well, is Push Out to the Criminalization of Black Girls in Schools. It kind of just from my understanding, speaks to what it, what is a word I'm looking for? The, I don't even know if there's a word for this. How, how society reads black bodies to be more adult than they are. Like black people are tried more as adults at younger ages, looking at it through the lens of girls in schools in this same phenomenon. From, from how I'm, I've, 
how I remember reading the synopsis of this book. Okay, next one, The Beginning and End of Rape Confronting Sexual and Violence in Native America by Sarah Deer. I saw this at Kim from Native Lady Book Warriors channel. She did like a top 10 nonfictions, um, or not, not indigenous nonfictions. And I had never heard of this, but I, again, I just, I, I feel like this is like a gap in my knowledge that I have now perceived. Indigenous women are much more likely to be the victim of a violent crime. Um, and there are many, many, many missing and murdered indigenous women in America, um, in Canada as well. And I feel like this will be like a very difficult book to read, but a very informative one, just something that I feel like I should know a bit more about. Okay, the next one is What's Your Pronoun Beyond He and She by Dennis Barron. This one I definitely did see at Mara Books Like Woe's channel a few years ago. And from what I remember, it is about the concept of pronouns and how, and like, looking at that through time and how they've changed. I'm hoping it gets into different languages and different language uses of pronouns because it's definitely different from language to language. I'm interested to see, like, how they take the current political climate and people being upset by having to remember pronouns. <laughs> I just can't. And uh, take that into the past and kind of explain it through a linguistic historical lens. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Another one is The Color of Law, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America. I know like uh, superficial stuff about this, I guess I should say. My partner went to school for planning, as I said earlier. Um, so he has told me a bit about red taping and like the type of planning that was very racist that was occurring. Um, and so I, I'm just, I know this book is like a classic of kind of this like social justice nonfiction genre. And uh, I've been putting it off for years and I would like to finally get to it. And I think my last one, and we're gonna end on a light note, is Screwball Television, Critical Perspectives on Gilmore Girls. This I found just kind of perusing my Hoopla app, and I love Gilmore Girls, so I wanted to read it. It's a, it's a collection of essays kind of about it. Yeah, I've watched Gilmore Girls multiple times all the way through. I watched it all the way through with my roommate in college, and I've watched it once post-college, and uh, just really love the show, really love the characters, uh, and I'm just interested to see what they, um, what this is. <laughs> and honestly, just the fact that it was about Gil Gilmore Girls, essays about Gilmore Girls caught my attention. So I think if I could count right, that is 22 books. That is my whole list. If I don't get all to all of them in 2022, it's fine. I'm not worried. I will read them eventually, maybe. Or I might lose interest, or something else might come out about the same subject that sounds more interesting. This was just a fun list. Tell me if you like any of these. Tell me if there's anything based on what I kind of talked about that you think I should read in the nonfiction realm. That is all I got. So until next time, happy reading.